Hello, and welcome to this brief video about the history of Stewart Country Day School of the Sacred Heart and its sacred spaces. Over 60 years ago, Stewart's founders, Mary Murray, Peggy McNeil, and Millie Harford, pictured here, were young mothers who wanted to start a school that would nurture young women both intellectually and spiritually, and impart a deep sense of community and service. In 1960, dressed in navy blue suits and white gloves, the three took the train to Washington, D.C. to meet with the Vicar of the Religious of the Sacred Heart and to seek her approval to build a Sacred Heart School in Princeton, New Jersey. Eventually, Mother Berry gave our founding mother's approval to build our school, a remarkable undertaking given the challenges education in general faced in the 1960s. A new social and political awareness had dawned on the American scene, exemplified in the growth of the civil rights and women's rights movements. Throughout the decade, educators were forced to reevaluate all areas of the status quo, from the content of the curriculum, relevancy became the watchword, to the social, economic, and ethnic composition of the student body. Though Sacred Heart schools in the first half of the 20th century had acquired a reputation for exclusivity, this trend did not reflect the Society of the Sacred Heart's original vision of education. A 1958 directive urged the society to move toward greater diversity, especially in its educational endeavors. Mother Berry liked the idea of encouraging a large and ecumenical community in Princeton to attend and support this school. Her support led to the creation of a school that not only met the needs of the larger Princeton community, but those of the Society of the Sacred Heart as it embarked in new directions. Diversity marked our earliest beginnings and continues to be a hallmark of our school. Once the religious of the Sacred Heart agreed to support the school, the next thing needed was land upon which to build it. The property on which our school sits was sold to our founding mothers by Lady Maria Monk. As she, Mary Murray, and Peggy McNeil walked along the Stewart stream, two young doe came down for a drink. Ever since then, the deer has always been associated with Stewart. Lady Monk was a Catholic from Austria and was happy to offer the land at a substantially reduced cost when she learned it was being purchased to build a Sacred Heart school. While we are ever grateful to Lady Monk, we know that our school sits on land that originally belonged to the indigenous peoples of this area. Our school is built on the sacred ground of the Lene Lenape, and so we remember that in our land acknowledgement drafted by our upper school students. We gather today on the land of the Lene Lenape, as members of the Stewart community, we aspire to show appreciation, respect, and concern for all peoples and our environment. We honor the Lenape and other indigenous caretakers of these lands and waters, the elders who lived here before, the indigenous today, and the generations to come. After purchasing the land, our founding mothers next needed to choose an architect to design and build our school. They chose Jean Labatou, head of Princeton University's School of Architecture. Over the years, Labatou taught and mentored many successful and famous architects, including J. Robert Hillier, Charles Moore, and Robert Venturi. His student, Robert Venturi, actually designed Corunum, our theater and liturgical space. Stewart is the only building in the world to be designed and built by Jean Labatou. Labatou worked with his good friend, the Catholic philosopher, Jacques Maritain, in planning how Stuart would look. They traveled to Europe seeking inspiration from what they called Eucharistic architecture, where a building itself is designed to represent God's love. You do not need to be Catholic or even Christian to appreciate the spiritual essence and the special purpose to this building. It is designed to be experienced. This is no ordinary building. Every element of its design has a very special meaning. Labatou wanted to be sure that no matter where you were in our school, you would always have a beautiful view. It was important to him that you might wonder as you walked through our school, whether you were inside or outside. The green exterior tile blends in perfectly with the surrounding forest. Labatou made sure that there were floor to ceiling windows everywhere, just like in Millie's garden. They helped blur the lines between the outside and the inside. Some of our students' earliest memories at Stewart are of playing in the Friendship Forest. As the name implies, this is a space where lifelong friendships are formed. 
You can really see the way Labatu brought light into our school when you look at this picture of the Townsend Garden. This garden is a favorite space outside of Millie's Garden and the STEM Link for reading, collaborating, or quiet reflection. The space was dedicated in 1993 by Stuart parent and grandparent Charles C. Townsend Jr. in honor of his first wife, Anne, during the 30th anniversary celebration of the founding of Stuart. Also in the space is the black steel Barra Cross, which was donated by Mr. and Mrs. James Callery, parents of former Stuart student Fidelma Callery Woodley, class of 1985. On the far wall of the Townsend Garden hang stepping stones created by every school in our network to celebrate the 100-year anniversary of the passing of Sister Janet Erskine Stewart, our school's namesake. Labatou made sure all of our steps had small risers. He wanted children to fly up and down them easily. They also made it simpler for the religious of the Sacred Heart to go up and down the stairs. They wore long dresses called habits as you see in this picture. Labatou thought that his staircases made the religious look like they were floating when they walked them. This particular staircase is named the Staircase of Physical Fitness. The windows surrounding the Stairway of Physical Fitness are topped with these special water spouts that look like Christ's crown of thorns, again bringing attention to the sacred. The school is lined with similar copper gutters with spouts that stick out and take water off the roof away from our building. Another special symbol at Stewart is the Christ pillar. It is in the front entry and reminds us that God is watching over us all. Notice how the image of Christ's head, heart, and feet are molded into the pillar. If you look closely, you will see a line of pebbles falling from the bleeding heart on the otherwise smooth round pillar. The line of pebbles represents Christ's blood poured out for us all. Similar lines of pebbles are repeated in the concrete walls and pillars throughout our school, both inside and out, and they are meant to show how Christ is in every part of our building. As you pass the Christ pillar, you will see Stuart's Mater window. Mater is the Latin name for mother and represents Mary, the mother of God. Our Mater sits directly opposite the main entrance to Stuart, so she is the first face you see as you enter our school. The image was hand-painted on glass by Labatou and his graduate assistant, Father Prokes. She was thoughtfully placed in this specific location so that our mater would also face Princeton University, the steeple of Princeton's Trinity Church, and the Princeton University Chapel. From the very beginning, Stuart was a place that honored learning and faith. Mater is inspired by a fresco that sits in a convent at the top of the Spanish Steps in Rome. There is a statue or a picture of Mater in every Sacred Heart school. Stewart's Mater is the only Mater in a Sacred Heart school that is painted on a window. The trees and nature outside come through the glass to fill the painting. Her beauty changes with the seasons. Next to Mater is Stewart's Corunum Cross. The cross on top was cut from the final beams of steel that were hauled away after 9-11 and the collapse of the World Trade Center. In the days following the tragedy, Stuart girls drew pictures and wrote notes of thanks to the emergency workers and wrapped the notes around candy bars and snacks. Over 2,500 messages were sent to workers to let them know of our support and prayers. This special cross was given to Stuart in thanks. A Stuart parent, who was also an architect, designed the base, which is fashioned after the Twin Towers. Down the hall to the right of the main entrance is the Staircase of Intellectuality, which leads from the lower school to the Raisa Maritain Library. On the first landing, there are two tree trunks which appear to reach up to heaven. They are named Supplication and Declamation, meaning prayer and honor to God. Our library was named in honor of Raisa Maritain, the wife of Jacques Maritain. Both were good friends of Stuart's architect, Jean Labatou. Raisa was a philosopher, poet, and mystic who was raised as an Hasidic Jew and later converted to Catholicism. These pictures show Raisa and Jacques when they were younger, and the lower picture shows how they looked at the time of the dedication of Stuart's library. The Maritans were prominent philosophers 
who inspired Dorothy Day and the Catholic worker movement. Raisa was a contemplative and a poet, and Jacques, who wrote many volumes about a Christian relating to the world, was also a deeply spiritual person. Spirituality was core to their lives, and they brought that spirituality with them as they worked with Labatu on the design and construction of our school. As you head toward Stewart's art wing, you will find this stained glass window. These two panes are from one of four windows designed and built by the renowned artist Jean Lafarge around 1885. His great-grandson, Oliver Hamill, donated these two restored panes to Stewart in 2003. Lafarge is considered to be one of the most innovative and versatile American artists of the 19th century and achieved international fame as a designer of stained glass windows. Opposite the Lafarge window is the entrance to the upper school. This exterior view shows the many large boulders placed in the entrance walkway. Labatou placed boulders from the property both inside and outside of our school. The interior boulders were designed for meditative walks and are representative of the 14 stations of the cross. Those scattered outside the building stood as symbols of the building blocks of knowledge and faith that students would receive here, the rocks upon which all else in their lives would be built. As you enter the S-shaped serpentine parlor, you see the green glazed bricks that are also found both inside and outside of the school. The walls mimic green hedgerows that appear to be growing inside the building. Labatu insisted that each brick be individually glazed as a reminder that each girl was unique and would bring very specific gifts to our Stewart community. When building the school, the steel workers were so taken by its beauty and symbolism that they created their own piece of religious art. They made a cross of metal rebar, tools and wire, and placed it in the Hall of Mechanical Equipment. Labatu was so taken in turn with their work that he had three windows cut into the wall of the serpentine parlor so that the cross in the mechanical room could be seen by the students, one each for lower school, middle school, and upper school girls. As you leave the serpentine parlor and travel toward the chapel area, you pass the bell tower, a gift from Jean Labatou's sister-in-law. The bell was commissioned by Labatou and cast in Annecy, France in 1962. A plaque reads, the bell tower surmounted by the cross is an integral part of monastic houses and dedicated places of learning. The ringing of the bell traditionally calls all to study, prayer, and worship. This house is blessed by its presence. The bell has been used over the years to begin the school day and to signify the close of graduation. On August 28, 2013, we rang the Stuart Bell along with those from over 300 other schools across the country to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. The bell is at the entrance to Sea Corridor. Sea Corridor gets its name from the area's original purpose as a convent. That is why the rooms in Sea Corridor are so small. They used to be the rooms where the religious of the Sacred Heart lived and slept when they were not teaching. As you travel down the first floor of the Sea Corridor, you will find our chapel. A natural boulder has been made into our chapel altar. Located in the original convent wing and designed for use by the religious, the chapel is now used for prayer gatherings as well as teaching moments. The altar is made of a two-ton, flat-topped, heart-shaped stone found on the grounds of the school. The stone rests on a three-sided concrete base. There are seven pebbled lines on each side that align with seven small gold tiles representing the seven sacraments, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, and the seven seals of the Book of Revelation. The crucifix was created by Sacred Heart alumna, Sister Prisha, and was designed to be seen from either side. The chapel is wrapped by Labatu's third staircase, the Stairway of Spirituality. Here, open stair landings create a natural place to pause and reflect. The smooth concrete walls within the stairwell are heated, inviting you to absorb their warmth as you climb the stairs. As you walk back toward the bell tower, you will find the Zen garden. Labatu built it for the nuns as a private garden off the sea corridor. It was a place meant for quiet reflection. 
It was desert-like and simply designed. It was the perfect place for the religious to meditate and pray. Today, it has been repurposed as an outdoor gathering space for eating, studying, and reflecting. When you are in the Zen garden, look up. You will see a large spout that waters the plants in the garden. As your eyes travel to the top of the spout, you can see a cross perfectly framed by the opening. Labatu designed it this way so that when it rained, the water would be funneled past the cross through the spout to all parts of the building. Another way to show how Christ is a very important part of our school. The student center faces the Zen garden. Even as we renovate spaces, we honor Labatu's aesthetic and design intents. The new student center maximizes light, connects the outdoor and indoors, and retains the yellow brick walls original to the preschool that was once there. Our glazed green brick hallways, pebbled concrete pillars, and smooth wooden rails invite you to touch and literally feel the building. Throughout, there's a deliberate sense of movement, even when you're standing still, designed to make you stop and think to inspire you to look inward and reflect. We believe that this sacred space blesses all that we do here at Stewart. We hope that you learned a little bit about our school and how it came to look as it does today.